Hello and welcome to EE233. I'm your instructor, Gregory Myers. In this video, we're going to start off a new series focusing on data and data storage. This series, referred to as Data Demo, will start by looking at three different data types and the ability to store them persistently on our file system. The ability to persistently store and retrieve data is a key ingredient in a successful application. And as such, we want the ability to simply demonstrate that we can, for instance, add and remove a specific piece of data from a file. For this example, we're going to focus on an int, double, and char. We want to be able to add, remove, and then view the statistics associated with a particular file. And we want to be able to do so in either interactive or in parametric mode. So our tier one switches for this project are going to be a slash H for help slash I for interactive, which is going to mean or require printfs and scanfs and a slash P for parameter mode. In addition, we want to be able to choose from the tier two modes that allow for us to add remove or display the stats associated with a particular file. From there, we want to be able to support the int, double, and char data types. In this particular video, we're going to focus mainly on setting up our main and triaging our switches, as well as stubbing in each one of our functions. Now, if you happen to have an earlier version of this file, I'd like to take just a second to point out some very minor differences. The first is that the removal of the slash makes it consistent for both the interactive and the parametric mode, as well as a slight rearrangement for consistency sake in the switches to match with the way or the order that the questions were asked in the interactive mode. The second thing to note is that initially there would have been string pointers for some of our input data that has now been changed over to constant character arrays. Other than that, there are no significant changes with this file and earlier versions. So what we would like to do is we'd like to begin by simply copying over our function signatures and turning them into prototypes. We'll then take a look at some of the input arguments as well as how to set up the help and what our output files should look like. We'll do most of that work though in other videos. This video, we're simply going to focus on getting the structure correct. So to begin with, let me go ahead and split my screen. I'm going to go ahead and copy over those function prototypes or rather the comments that we can turn into function prototypes simply by using our control H or deleting the comment character in front of each one of our lines, as well as adding a semicolon onto the end of each of these. Now, to begin with, you'll notice that these functions are essentially grouped into three categories. There are the ability to add, the ability to remove, and then ultimately to try to get the file statistics. So if you'll notice that essentially the only difference between the four versions of add are the types of input arguments. And particularly the int, double, and char vary only on the data type of the last argument. Likewise, with the remove file data series, particularly the int, double, and char, the main thing that differs is the data type of the last argument. Now, for just a second, let's focus on the add file data and the remove file data. The last argument of both of these is actually a string or will be assumed to be a string. So keep that in mind as we proceed, particularly in our next videos. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to go ahead 
and paste our prototypes below our main, remove the semicolon, and then take a second to go ahead and expand each one of our functions out into its implementation. Notice that for all of these functions, we have an int return type. Now, we could use this as either exit success or as a failure, or perhaps we can also use it in some cases as a integer value to simply show whether or not we have successfully or how many pieces of data we have added to a file or for that matter, removed from a file. Once we have added the function prototypes and the stubbed in functions for each of our defined functions in our data type storage.c, we also want to remember that we wish to have a help function. And so that is going to have a void return type as well as a void input argument. And we're going to go ahead and add that then to the bottom of our list here. Continuing to stub these in, we should go ahead and establish a return value. So in this case, I'm going to use our results variable that we use in many of our other videos, as well as initializing it to zero and then simply returning it. What I'd also like to take a second to do is to stub in a printf statement that we will ultimately use to simply acknowledge that a particular function is actually being called. For right now, don't put anything inside of the printf except just leave it as empty quotes. These four lines we can now copy to each one of our functions. Lastly, what we would like to do is get into the habit of putting some preliminary documentation in place. Particularly, we would like to start off by simply using a multi-line comment for the name and the description of a particular function. Now, I'm going to stub these in right now and we'll return to this in later videos. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go back and each one of my printf statements, I would simply like to copy in the name of the function that is being called, followed by a new line. Now you can get as fancy as you want to here. As a matter of fact, I would encourage you to consider even passing some of your input arguments, but at the very least, simply providing the name of the function that's being called is going to be very useful in the future, particularly as we're trying to track the progress of our executable. You may choose later on to comment out these print statements if you feel that your customer would not want to see the extra noise. However, though, in the, the initial development, it is probably very useful to include these print statements. Once again, as you see, I am just simply copying the function name and following that with a new line. Now, the last thing that you should do is come down here to your help. And let's go ahead and stub in some of the help. We can always improve on this later, but at the very least, what we can do is we can handle some of the examples that were provided, which note are incomplete in your data type storage.c. And so we can begin by simply copying and pasting 
the comments over. And in this case, we can use a control H. And what we can do is very carefully, with the help of one of our first lines, simply put in what we would like to see. In this case, we'll tab over our printf. And basically, everything up to the capital letter D can simply be replaced by a printf. We'll go ahead and replace. And you can see that this makes pretty quick work of setting up our help. Now we simply need to close our quotes and our parentheses. In this particular case, we can add a new line as well. And so if you want to, you can speed this up as well by simply copying and pasting. This also gives us an opportunity to notice one of the minor changes or differences between this version and earlier versions of this project in that you'll note that the file name is followed by the data type and then followed by the output file. And for the add and remove, the input file name is followed by the data type and then the data. Once again, just minor differences. We can then proceed the comments that we've copied over by simply some information such as usage. Once again, the idea is that we want to provide some examples to the user of how to use your application. Now, let's go back up to main and let's start talking about triaging some of our switches. And in particular, what we want to do is we want to take a look at the first tier switches, the slash H, the slash I, slash P. <clears throat> and then what we can do is we can move on to the add, remove, and stats. But to get, begin with, we simply want to look at what is the minimum number of switches that must be provided to your executable in order for some action to occur. And so to begin with, you would agree that you have to at least provide some switch. So in other words, you should have an arg count greater than one. So in a scenario where your arg count is less than two, so if arg count is less than two, we know that the user effectively doesn't know what to do with your application. At which point you should simply return the help or print the help rather. So this is what we're going to refer to as an implicit call for help. Now, if we follow along with this, everything else assumes that we have at least two arguments. And specifically what we can do is we can now look at our arg count equal to two, and we can use our string compare i to look at that second argument or argv square brackets one. And if it matches the slash h, that means that the user explicitly wanted help, in which case, yet again, we simply want to call for help. But this time we can refer to this now as an explicit call for help. And once again, you can continue with this. You can have a slash help, slash question mark, and so on. Now, taking a look at the additional examples, we want to look at the slash I. And particularly what we can do is now look at the help either at the bottom of our .c file or in the instructions and take a look and see if we can establish some sort of pattern with each one of the slash I's. Notice that a slash I must always be followed by at least one additional argument for a total of one, two, three switches, or rather the executable plus two switches for a total of three arguments. And so what we can do now is we can simply set up our if statement such that if our argc is equal to three, 
And our string compare I notices that our V square brackets one is equal to slash I, then we know that we are going to be looking at one of our interactive options. And at this point then what we need to do, since we're guaranteed that we have three switches, we can now use a nested if statement to triage whether that is going to be add, remove, or stats. So for this branch of the if statement, we're going to delve in a little deeper, particularly focusing on the argv square brackets two using our string compare i. So once again, we're going to compare argv square brackets two, and we're going to compare it now to our slash add option. And if that is equal to zero, well, then we should be collecting data and then ultimately trying to add it to a file. Under the else if branch, we want to check to see that our argv square brackets two matches our remove. And if that's the case, then of course, we're going to attempt to collect the data and attempt to remove it from one of our files. At this point, I would imagine that you're starting to see a pattern, which we can then simply copy and paste. And in this case, the third option is going to be to see the stats for a particular file. And then finally, if we reach the else, in other words, the user entered in slash I, but their third argument was not handled by us, we simply want to make another implicit call to help. All right, so far so good. What we wanna do now is we wanna go ahead and focus on triaging the remainder of the switches, particularly the slash P versions. And you'll notice here that for slash P, we also can provide an add, remove and stats. And notice that at least for this particular set of examples, the total number of arguments happens to be the same. Now, I'd like to take a slightly different approach at this so that we can sort of mix and match our nesting with a more flat structure, just so that you can see various different possibilities. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by looking at the total argc for each of these. So in other words, that's our zeroth argument. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have a total of six arguments for an add. One, two, three, four, five, six. A total of six for a remove. And one, two, three, four, five, six for a stats. So essentially what we can do is we can start off each one of these else ifs with an argc equal to six. From there, what we can do is we can look at both the slash P and the following switch to see if we are planning on handling that option. And so what we can do now is simply have an else if followed by argc equal to six, compounding that, in other words, using a and to use string compare I and we're going to apply that then to our arg v square brackets three. Um, rather, our square brackets two. And what we would like to do now is with our arg v square brackets two, is we'd like to compare it to our add. And if that is equal to zero, that means that our arg v square brackets two is equal to slash add. Additionally, what we'd like to do is we'd also like to see whether or not the user has provided any additional information. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll stop here with the slash add. Um, sorry, I think I've got my count wrong here. Let's start this back over real quick. So that's my arg 
v square bracket zero. This is my arg v. There we go. That's what we're missing here. Sorry about that. I got a little bit sidetracked. So I knew the arg v square brackets two was supposed to be add. We need to add in here string compare i or arg v square brackets one. And we want to compare that to slash p. And then we want to compound that with comparing the argv square brackets to, to add. Now, let's try this one more time. Well, hopefully I'll explain a little better for this pass. So what we want to do is we want to look at the total arg count equal to six. The second thing we want to test is to see whether the user had passed for argv square brackets one a slash p. And if they had done that, we also want to check to see using string compare i that our argv square brackets two had, in this case, a remove. And if all three of those conditions are correct or match rather, then at this point, then we know that the user is interesting, interested rather in removing a particular piece of data from a particular file. The last option that we wanna deal with then is the stats. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to simply replace our comparison for argv square brackets two with stats. And then the only other possibility then is that we reach this else, in which case is going to be another implicit call for help. Now, Hopefully you, you can see the advantages and disadvantages of both approaches. In the nested approach, you have sort of a clear path forward. In other words, you know that if you have a slash I, then you need to start looking at your arg v2. In the flat approach, you have multiple things that you wish to test. Once again, there's pros and cons to each of these. Now, Let's go ahead and dig a little bit deeper now into either our slash I or our slash P. Since we kind of can see a little more straightforward how our slash P is going to work, we'll start with those. And so with our slash P, essentially we are guaranteed or hope to see six total arguments. So in other words, argv3 should ideally be the input file. argv square brackets four should be the data type, and then argv square brackets five should be the output file. If you're doing the add and remove, our argv square brackets three will be the input file, our argv square brackets four will be the data type, and our argv square brackets five will be the data. So what we wanna do now is we wanna go ahead and declare some temporary variables that we may or may not need to use in the future. The one in particular that I'm interested in is going to be the data type. So I'm gonna start off with a char data type and I'm gonna make it fairly large. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna make it larger than I would expect to need. For the rest of these, I plan to actually pass my argv square brackets one, two, three, and four, and so on. So I'm less likely to want to do anything with respect to capturing these yet. And you'll see why in just a second. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to use my string copy to copy to copy to our destination data type whatever value we see in our argv square brackets 4 
So in this case, argv square brackets four. Likewise, you can do the same with your input file name and your output file name. So taking a second to think about this, I'd like to actually retract something I said. I think I am going to go ahead and use the uh, temporary variable names, particularly for my input file and my output file, because I do actually think it will help a little bit with some clarity in this example. So um, we're going to go ahead and create a character vector for our input file name. And Likewise, we can make it fairly large, although I wouldn't expect to necessarily have any file names that were longer than 30. Uh, you can always increase that if necessary. And we're going to do the same thing now with our output file name. Um, additionally, we're going to use this when we get to our interactive. Um, we can go ahead and create a data character array and at this point then, we wanna make this one fairly large. As a matter of fact, um, considerably larger than the other ones. And, and you can choose to make this even larger than 100. Um, ultimately, what we would like to be able to do is potentially hold an entire line in a file. And you'll see what I'm talking about in later videos. But for right now, we'll leave it at 100 because that's probably going to be larger than anything that we're going to use for this particular example. Now, uh, given that we now have those extra temporary variables, then what we'd like to do is go ahead and utilize them, um, particularly when with our argv square brackets three. So we're going to use our string copy. Um, we're going to copy into our input file name. And we're going to copy to that our argc, argv rather, square brackets three. And then for the last piece, then we're going to use string copy. And we're going to copy into the data our argv square brackets five. Now, it turns out that we're going to do essentially the exact same thing for our remove. In other words, if you notice for our add and a re remove, the additional arguments for the slash P are the same. So in both cases, they accept an input file name, they specify the data type as well as the data. And so they come also in the same order. So in other words, we can simply do the exact same process. And then lastly, for our slash p slash stats, you'll notice that we are required to specify an input file. So string copy our input file name. And we want to get this from our argv square brackets three. We also collect the data type. And we collect that from our argv square brackets four. And the last one is going to be the output file name. So this is a little bit different from the first two examples. So we want to capture this now from our argv square brackets five. Now, what we want to do for these is we want to make now calls to our functions. Remember, our functions don't actually do anything yet, but what we would like to do is we'd ultimately like to make calls to the appropriate function. And to begin with, what we want to do is we want to make the calls to the add file data as well as the remove file data. We're going to come back to the add file int and the add file double and the add file char as well as the remove file int, remove file double, and remove file char in a later video. First, let's focus on the add file data. And so what we want to do now is we want to get a results 
return value and it's going to be an integer. And we are simply going to capture then the output value from calling our function. In this case, whenever we collect the data from the command line arguments, and it indicates that we should be adding, we simply want to make a call to add file data. And for the first argument, we simply want to pass the input file name. For the second argument, we want to pass the data type. And for the third argument, we want to pass the data itself. Likewise, for our slash p slash remove, we simply say results equal to remove file data. And for that, we also pass the input file name, the data type, as well as the data. And then lastly, for the stats, we simply say results equal to get file stats. We pass the input file name, the data type, and the output file name. So now, even though we don't have any code in any of our functions, at least our switches are wired up so that we can test that they work correctly. Which brings us back now to our interactive mode. In our interactive mode, we're going to have to collect a little bit of information from the user through some printf statements followed up with some scanfs. And you'll notice that I've provided for you a template here for what type of information we would be collecting from the user, starting with enter the input file name. So we have our variables already established. At this point, we simply want to provide the print Fs. And so in this case, you can retype it or you can simply borrow a little bit of my code. In each of these cases, you'll probably want to consider adding a new line And we want to follow up each of these printfs with the corresponding scanf. So for entering the input file name, we would simply provide a scanf. And we would expect the format spec of percent %s for a string, followed by the address of the input file name variable. We would do the same thing now with our data type. So once again, scanf percent s followed up with a ampersand and our data type and then for the last one we are actually going to go ahead and collect the data as a string regardless of the data type that we entered earlier and you'll see how we'll handle that in just a second so once again a percent s for this last one is going to be just data. At this point, then, what we want to do is we want to make a call to our add file data function, and we want to store the results in our results variable. So add file data. And we want to pass to it the input file name, the data type, as well as the data. Now, the good news is this isn't terribly different for the remove. As a matter of fact, you can actually go ahead and copy all of your prompts as well as your scanfs and paste them into your remove. And the only difference, of course, is that once you have the information, you simply say results 
are equal to remove file data. And once again, you pass the input file name, the data type, and the data. Likewise, with the last example, we actually are going to specify the input file name as well as the data type. And then our third prompt is for the output file. So we can borrow some of our code and even go so far as to possibly reuse part of our first input by simply replacing it now with output. And at this point, we can simply make a call to our get stats by passing to it the input file, the data type, and the output file name. Now, if you recall earlier in the video, I said that it might be a good idea for you to go back at, once you're at this point and inside your print Fs of each one of your add file, remove and so on, that maybe provide a little more information, in other words, to verify that you're actually correctly passing these arguments. So in other words, what you would do is you would simply provide then a percent %s for you to be able to print out the input file name the data type and the data and so on. But I'm going to leave that for you to decide whether or not you wish to add that. At this point, although we don't have any code in our functions, we should have a working main. In other words, it should be able to triage our switches correctly. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to go ahead and build it. I'm going to go ahead and come on over here to my command window. I type in DIR and you see that I have my data demo here. And at this point, if I just type in data demo and hit enter, I should see my help as well as if I had provided the slash H as well as if I had just provided something that made absolutely no sense. Now, from here, what we'd like to do is simply test our switch combinations. Okay, and we'll start off with our slash I, because with our slash I, we should be able to provide it simply a add, remove, or stats. And so in this particular case, we'll start off by testing our slash I and our add, and we're getting prompted for the input file name. Now I'm gonna be a little quick on this, so I'm actually just gonna use simple names here, a.txt. For my output, I would put in something like int, and for the data, I would simply put in a number. At least it's making the call to the add file data function. And you can see that because it's now printing that to the console. Likewise, we can test our remove and we will once again, a.txt, enter the data type, which was int, enter the data and some other value here. And we see that we're calling then the remove file data. We can do the same now with each one of the interactive switches, but we also like to test the parametric switches. So we'll start off with the slash p slash add. And first of all, if I just enter that, I don't have enough input arguments and I should be prompted then for my help. So instead, what I want to do is I want to add the name of my input file and the quotes are optional, but if you have spaces in your input file, then you would want to have quotes around it, as well as the data type and then a sample piece of data. And you'll see that I am yet again calling my add file data function. Likewise, if I want to change my add to remove, we should now be seeing the remove file data. So it seems like we've got most, if not all, of our switches correctly wired up. So this is where we're going to stop this video. So please make sure 
that you have all of your switches working and then you have your prompts, both your printfs and your scanfs set up for this particular example. And in our next videos, we're gonna focus in on how to make each one of the functions work with respect to the file IO. Hopefully you found this video useful. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me and thank you for watching.